Hey, it's Dave Cummings at PLNU. Welcome back to this series of videos on viruses. In part one, we talked about just some basics, introduced you to some concepts and definitions of what a virus is and isn't, uh, start getting you thinking about how different they are from bacteria and uh, other cellular life forms. What I want to do now is start thinking about the physical nature of the virus itself. So we're going to start with the nucleic acid. It's the information, remember we said a virus is really not much more than a nucleic acid wrapped up in a protein coat to protect it and deliver it from one host cell to the next. Turns out that every combination of double-stranded, single-stranded DNA or RNA is found in viruses in roughly one to one to one to one ratio, right? So roughly, this is really rough, but roughly 25% of all the viruses that infect people will fall into one of each of these categories. So double-stranded DNA makes sense. Single-stranded RNA makes sense. Double, single-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA, those are goofy, right? Those are really weird. We don't see those much in the world of living things, in the world of cells. And it's one of the many ways that viruses um, break from tradition, so to speak. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk just briefly about each of those four. I think they're relatively self-evident, but I want to give examples. We've talked so much this semester about examples of bacteria, and you really don't have any examples of viruses. And so I want you to start building that database. So keep uh, careful notes on what kinds of viruses are out there, what diseases they cause, and what we know about them. So let's go ahead and jump into a few uh, viruses organized based on their nucleic acids. When we talk about the structure and symmetry, structure, remember, is, is how it's built. How it's built. And symmetry means shape. So we'll get to symmetry soon. I want to start with structure. And the first part of the structure is the nucleic acid. <coughs> Excuse me. First part of the structure is the nucleic acid. So let's focus on that. In subsequent videos, we'll talk about capsid, envelope, and symmetry. All right. How about a run-of-the-mill double-stranded DNA virus? Great example would be the, the chicken pox virus. A fancy name for it is the varicella zoster virus, or VZV sometimes. It is in a, a very big family of viruses called herpes viruses. They're all very similar to one another. Lots and lots of different examples of herpes viruses cause everything from chicken pox to cold sores to sexually transmitted diseases and so on. This is an example, and it's actually relatively common with viral infections, where it's not too big of a deal in children, but it becomes much more serious in terms of complications in adults. And so when I was a kid and we didn't have a vaccine, there's a vaccine available now, and most of you have been vaccinated against chicken pox. When I was a kid, we didn't have a vaccine. <clears throat> and because our parents didn't want us to uh, to get it later in life when we were adults when it could cause significant problems, they would literally have these little chicken pox parties. I remember Michelle down the street from my house had chicken pox, and my mom packed up a lunch and sent me two, three houses down to go play with Shelly. And I came home with chicken pox. And it wasn't fun, and it was itchy, and my fever was up and down. And then it went away, and life is good, right? I'm not going to get chicken pox as an adult, but... VZV is an example of what can cause a latent infection or be a latent virus. Latent means it's holding out or waiting. Uh, when the chickenpox virus retreats, when the immune system finally wins, in many people, a small number of virions, virions, the virion is, is for like a single unit of a virus, a small number of them will actually hide in some of our, our nerve cells, particularly sensory nerve cells. And later in life, they can reactivate due to things like stress. From about age 50 on, the risk of, of varicella zoster viruses reactivating, not as chicken pox, but as shingles, it goes up from age 50 on. Now, I say that, and then every year I meet students who, when they were 20, had a case of shingles. It does happen, uh, particularly under under great stress. Um, but it seems to be much more common, happen much more frequently in older adults from, from 50 on. And so starting at age, it's either 50 or 55, there's actually a shingles vaccine. It's a vaccine against the chicken pox virus, this varicella zoster virus. 
and it's it's essentially a booster to protect your immune system uh, or to induce your immune system to protect you if uh, they ever reactivate and come back out. So varicella zoster virus, great example of a double-stranded DNA virus. Number two, here's a single-stranded DNA virus. That's pretty weird, right? DNA is usually double-stranded, but in the world of viruses, the rules are different. An example would be parvovirus B19. Where have you heard of parvovirus? Many of you have heard of parvo as a, a dog infection, and it is in the same family of viruses. B19 specifically it infects us. Uh, as far as I know, does not infect dogs, and the, the parvovirus that infects dogs doesn't infect us. There's no crosstalk as far as I know. But parvo B19 causes something that we call fifth disease. And the reason it's called fifth disease is because um, pediatricians turn of the last century would carry around a little list of the most common illnesses they were seeing among children. And fifth on the list was rosy cheeks, uh, fever, maybe a little bit of a body rash that cleared up on its own within a couple of days. Some people rather irreverently called it slapped cheek syndrome because you can see like in the picture here, this little lady looks like she's been slapped in the face, but uh, that hasn't happened, I can assure you. And to call it fifth disease is way easier than to call it parvovirus B19. Parents freak out when you use a big name like parvovirus B19, but you say, oh, it's just fifth disease, she's gonna be fine. Complications in childhood are very, very rare, but in adulthood, they're much more common, sort of like we saw with chicken pox. Specifically in adults, we see parvo infections causing arthritis if that adult was never exposed as a child. The good news is the vast majority of us, as far as we can tell, were exposed when we were kids. Very few people sneak into adulthood having never had a parvovirus B19 infection, and rarely ever would it have been um, would it have been diagnosed. It just would have been a little rash, a little fever, mom kept you home from school for a couple days, you ate popsicles, and then you got on with life. Never knew that was the virus that infected you. So parvo B19, a single-stranded DNA virus. All right, here's a really important double-stranded RNA virus. That's weird, right? Because RNA is usually a single-stranded molecule. Rotavirus. Rotavirus is the primary cause of severe diarrhea in children. And I will go so far as to say that it has been accused of being the number one cause of death in children under age six around the world. And when we think of diarrhea, we think, oh, it's uncomfortable. I have to run to the bathroom. I better get some Pepto or some Imodium. Uh, but when you live uh, in a, a region of the world where you can't escape this, where the water supply is unfortunately mixed with the wastewater, either by rain or intentionally, when there is no 7-Eleven up the street where you can pick up some little chewable Pepto tabs or, um, or a loperamide, right? That's the generic name for, uh, for Imodium. <clears throat> Dehydration kills people, and in small children, it, they're even more vulnerable. And so you want to make an impact on the world, try to figure out a way to, to cut back on rotavirus infections. There is a vaccine, um, not given as routine uh, as a routine vaccine in the United States, but it is given as a routine vaccine in regions, um, very rural areas, let's say in Brazil, for example, where you've got so much water that's going to be mixing wastewater with drinking and bathing and cleaning and washing and cooking water. And that when you do get an outbreak in a, a community, especially a very rural community, um, it's trouble, right? Lots of people are going to get the disease and some may actually die from it. And so the World Health Organization has pushed hard to get rotavirus vaccines to some of those more remote regions. Um, here in the United States, we can rehydrate. We can take Pedialyte and Gatorade, and if things get really bad, we can go to the hospital and get an IV. Double-stranded RNA virus, rotavirus, very important cause of mortality and morbidity in uh, children, especially around the world. And then finally, a single-stranded RNA virus, and there are several real important ones. Uh, this is influenza virus. We're actually going to have a whole series of lectures on influenza virus, so I'm not going to get too deep into it. But this happens to be uh, 2020. This is March of 2020, and we are all in lockdown for coronavirus right now. Uh, this coronavirus causes, this particular coronavirus outbreak we're dealing with causes COVID-19, coronavirus disease that began in 2019. This is also a single-stranded RNA virus 
very much like influenza. I hear people all the time saying, oh, this flu that's going around. No, what's going around is this COVID-19 coronavirus infection, not the flu. Why is that important? Well, uh, if like me, you got a flu vaccine this year, that is not going to, and you need to know this, it is not going to give you any protection against the coronavirus because they're completely unrelated. The only thing they really have in common is that they're single-stranded RNA, and they do have an envelope, both of them, uh, just like you see in this image here. All right, quick lesson summary, and then we'll move on to the capsids in the next video. So all viruses have to contain a nucleic acid. The nucleic acid is the information that is conveyed to the host cell for making more copies of the virus, right? So that nucleic acid information has to be there. They can be DNA or RNA, and they can be single-stranded or double-stranded, and you learned several examples, four different examples here today. And I want, to, want you to take note of, uh, of what you learned from those examples. So in the next video, we are going to discuss the capsid, the, the protein coat that protects this nucleic acid to make sure it can get from one host cell to the next.